If you have played Dark Souls or any From Software game, then you must be familiar with the Soulsborne genre. More often, Souls games are well known for its grinding playstyle. While existential crises can happen sometimes when you play these types of games, Souls games are fun and the grind is a good one. Remnant from the Ashes can be called a Souls-like game where instead of swords and shields, you use heavy arms. I think the developers had an idea to visualize this game as a different sandwich that has no cheese and just some more meat in it. Or maybe very little cheese because melee weapons are totally not out of the question. The game lets you choose between three classes with each class having different types of weapons to choose from. There's only three classes which is not that much but I think it's because a maximum of three players can join the co-op in this game. Your melee weapons are different based on which class you choose, like the scrapper has a mallet as the default melee weapon where the cultist has a hatchet. Primary weapons and the weapon mods also varies depending on which class you choose. I think the classes don't matter too much as the weapons you get can be used by every character with the only difference being distinctive weapon mods for each classes. But as you progress more in the game you can pretty much buy all the mods and then it doesn't really matter that much. Mars can be very useful depending on the combat situation you are in. They have a fixed cooldown and can be used repeatedly. Like healing yourself and your partners, burning some handless bone wearing caveman with flamethrower, or just summon a strange looking doggo who keeps barking all the time for no reason. You can pet the dog too, sweet. Individual maps with main story progression and side quests are available throughout the game. The co-op experience is surprisingly smooth as fuck and partying is not to mention a piece of cake. You can party with up to two more friends to do missions or fight bosses together or you can join local players lobby too. Needless to say, solo campaign is also doable. Now there's no souls like game without challenging pain in the ass boss fight so in remnant it's a mandatory part. And taking on a boss with your friends at 3 am over and over again is such a blast. Some bosses are harder but as you keep upgrading your talent points, it becomes easier. Your co-op allies should balance between healing and damaging. Or maybe just try to kill each other, that is also useful. The same dodge roll mechanic is obviously there and most of the time you're bound to shoot your gun. I didn't feel like using the melee weapon that much because every enemy dropped loots and ammo more than enough and you're not likely to run out of them anytime soon. And it's not really worth it to charge with your melee weapon and take hits from your enemies. Your inventory has your armors and special items. Weight management is a thing to look out for when it comes to using armors as more weight means you're more likely to fat roll. Or you can keep them if you wanna be more tanky than dodging much. Rings are another important thing that passively buffs things like your attack power, reducing damage taken from enemies, increasing speed and things like that. The dragon heart fully heals you or can be used to revive a teammate while blood ward consumable slowly heals you over time. There are some exceptional enemies that will build up additional damage effects in form of radiation, bleeding, corruption, etc. A variety of consumables can be used to increase resistances to those effects. Like drinking water increases radiation resistance, bandages stops the bleeding effect, or green leaf that increases corrosive resistance. Just like ring buffs, there are consumable buffs too. Your home base is where you upgrade your armor or weapons, craft materials, and buy consumables or weapon mods. The visuals of this game is not super impressive but it has some pretty nice textures to make it look solid enough. While the combat is intriguing enough in Remnant, it lacks a good story. The story is somewhat uninteresting and also not so well pictured. You just casually talk to NPCs and probably will skip the dialogues to get the objectives to move on forward. You'll sometimes find some books that will have something written which seems like a part of the plot but I just didn't feel like reading it anyway. The story just honestly seemed boring to me. So a Souls-like game with guns that came out 2 years ago, is it still worth playing? I would say it's somewhat worth it, the story is not the strong point and the gameplay can be really fun when you're playing with some friends because I tried solo campaign too but it didn't give me the fun I get in other Souls games. I would say this game is really worth playing if you have some friends to play with. Also, I am not saying that solo campaign is bad or boring in any way. So that's why Remnant from the Ashes is somewhat worth playing. And that's pretty much it. Subscribe for more worth it videos.